So like a bear hunter, we are hunting microwaves, except we're not actually going to see them. We're going to try to find their footprints as they leave them on candy placed in the microwave. Hopefully, if we can see the marks left by microwaves in the microwave oven, on the candy in the microwave oven, we can get some information about those microwaves. So follow along, see what the candy reveals. So the first set of experiments you'll see are done with the rotating dish removed from the microwave. This is the way we used to have microwaves back in the day. You just put your food in there, it would cook, and you take it out. These microwaves still exist. In fact, there's one in the teacher's room. All right, now we're trying a big pattern. So we've got the depth, the width, we've got a couple of diagonals in there. The rotating dish is out. Let's close this up. Let's run this for 30 seconds and let's see what happens. Can we tell? Hmm, well you have to do the touch test. Oh, I do see some. So the easiest way to check this out. Good, 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 good. Ah, uh, this one's a little soft. All right, we're trying this again. These are uh, like the little gummy lifesavers. This time set it up more of like an inner and outer circle. Let's see how this one does. I don't even know if we need 30 seconds, but let's do it. Look at that. Look at that. Those spots again, if you notice. One and two, three. And back here, four, those in particular. So the pattern that revealed in both the chips and the gummy savers was roughly the same. There are three hot spots over the floor of the microwave. And with our old style microwaves before you were born, we didn't have the rotating trays. It was just a flat bottom microwave. And when you put your food in, certain spots got hot and others didn't. So you can see here, only certain areas really caught the heat of the waves and others did not. Same pattern, the dish, the rotating dish is definitely an improvement. What you'll see now in the second part of the video is we've reinserted the rotating dish. And we wanna see how this affects the hotspot pattern for the foods. Uh, one thing qualitatively is to see whether the food cooks more evenly, and the other is to see whether this reveals anything new about our microwave footprint. And as you can see here, the cooking actually was uh, much more evenly distributed. Uh, the gummies were heated all around, and even the chips, as you move out, are heated. There is a bit of a pattern. Toward the center actually seems to catch a little less of the cooking, and toward the outside more but it's certainly distributed much more than it was when we did not have the rotating dish. Okay, we got a bunch of gelt. Chocolate coins lined up. Let's run them and see what happens. This time, let's do 45 seconds. Cook these suckers. Let's check it out. All right, perhaps the easiest way is a quick touch test. These I actually see are quite burned and melted. Not as much, so we had out here, we had kind of right around here, we had here. Oh, this one, sorry. I'm gonna measure those up, see what that gives us. Okay. okay, it appears perhaps some sort of pattern has emerged. Now, the chocolate did all warm, and so all of it at least felt a little soft, but it seemed like there really was extra heating down in this region, so I tried to set the ruler somewhere around there. Then, it seemed like there was extra heating right around this region. It looks like somewhere around, about 12 and a half centimeters. And then, we had extra heating, it's really right around this edge, so we're getting close to somewhere around 24 centimeters. Well, does that match anything? Well, this is where we'd have to go look at our standing waves, but it does look like you have about a 
roughly 12 centimeter and then 12 centimeter gap again. Does that 12 centimeter match up with something? 